Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're once again are going to be discussing black holes. And there's actually one right now on my t-shirt. By the way, you can find this design in the description below. Ah, uh, yeah, shameless self-promotion. Anyway, we're actually talking about collusion of black holes. The event that was theoretical for many decades and that was finally confirmed back in 2015. In this case, confirmed by LIGO, with the event itself visible right here. This was a black hole collision at a distance of over 1 billion light years away from us. A collision that ended up releasing a huge amount of energy that was actually converted to gravitational energy and released as gravitational waves that then traveled for millions and millions of light years until it reached planet Earth and until it was heard by us. And in one of the previous videos, that's technically I guess part 1, we've discussed the idea of, well, is it possible to surf these gravitational waves? Spoiler alert, the answer is no. You can find this video in the description as well. But there's also another really important thing I wanted to mention about black hole collisions in regards to the actual chirp they produce. You obviously hear it in this video right here. Now this is a conversion of gravitational waves detected by both LIGO facilities using their ridiculously powerful lasers that produce a beam that's about 4 kilometers long and the oscillations inside of this laser beam produced by the gravitational waves as they pass through planet Earth. And so these oscillations produce these frequencies, which can then be converted to sound that we can actually hear. And so in this case, these audible frequencies are basically what's known as sonification, turning another frequency into the frequency of sound. But in reality, if our ears could somehow hear the gravitational waves, they would actually hear this chirp as well, this unusual whoosh. And here's actually the mind-blowing part. Hypothetically, if you were close enough to this particular black hole collision, you would literally hear this you would physically hear the sound, even though there was nothing actually crossing your ear, except for gravitational waves. And so let's talk a little bit more about how you can technically hear a black hole collision if you find yourself in just the right place. Obviously this is a little bit hypothetical, but technically definitely possible. But in this case, this would have to be a relatively mild black hole that does not contain powerful relativistic jets or powerful accretion disks. Mostly because a lot of the energy produced by these disks and by the jets themselves are just so ridiculously powerful that they would most likely just destroy everything in their path. Which means that nobody would be around to hear anything. But sometimes if black holes have been orbiting for a long enough time with nothing around them, except for maybe some leftover planets nearby, these black holes would very likely not contain any disks or any jets. And so in these extremely rare cases, these ancient star systems that used to be stars of course, could maybe have a planet around them where you can technically stand and possibly even survive long enough to hear the final collision. And as I mentioned in the previous video, these collisions are ridiculously powerful. The final collision right here can actually release up to about 3 solar masses of total energy. But because this is gravitational energy and not electromagnetic energy, it does not result in visible electromagnetic light and thus does not produce powerful, very destructive supernova. Instead, all of this energy is converted to gravitational energy that produces way, way less effect. And if you were far enough from this collision, in theory, you could easily survive and even feel almost nothing. And that's because gravitational energy is just really, really weak. And here's actually a really important illustration to show you how weak this energy is. Now, this first collision we've ever discovered, the one right here, happened at a distance of about 400 megaparsec and it produced the explosion of about 3.6 times 10 to the power of 49 watt. That's a pretty powerful explosion. But by the time that it reached planet Earth, the energy reaching our planet was much, much lower. The actual energy intensity was approximately 20 milliwatt per square meter. This may not sound like a lot, but if you were to convert this to electromagnetic energy, it's actually more powerful than moonlight. Moonlight that you see right here, with a picture taken by the famous Scott Kelly during his stay on the International Space Station, produces less intensity in terms of pure energy compared to that gravitational wave detected by LIGO in 2015. But the moonlight we can definitely see and it actually does have effect on the planet. This however does not. It is so weak as a matter of fact that it barely even nudges particles at subatomic levels. It sort of shifts them just a little bit, which is then visible in these super super long laser detectors, but it would be invisible otherwise and nothing on Earth can actually feel it at all. Which basically shows you that gravitational energy compared to electromagnetic energy, such as moonlight, is just ridiculously less powerful. On the other hand, 
if somehow we were to convert this gravitational energy into sound waves, the actual sound produced here on planet Earth would be at a level of approximately 103 decibel. And that's a pretty loud sound. But because gravity is so weak, we obviously hear nothing. By the way, there are also some really intriguing ideas behind much larger and much more powerful gravitational waves created by larger black holes. You can find some of these explanations and ideas in one of the videos in the description. These types of black hole collisions do not produce anything major here on planet Earth. But what if you were much closer to them? What if you were standing on some ancient planet orbiting these black holes that might have survived initial supernova and now had actual life living on it at the same distance as Earth from the Sun itself? So roughly around one astronomical unit. Well, in this case, the gravitational waves would be powerful enough to have physical effects on some things. Because, like I mentioned, this is actually a tremendous amount of energy, approximately three solar masses of energy released as gravitational waves, they do produce waves with relatively high amplitude that start to oscillate physical objects that they pass through on those hypothetical planets. And at a distance of 1 AU, the intensity level would most likely create something that's approximately 50 decibel. And that's because in this case, the space-time itself will start deforming so much that parts of your inner ear will start to perceive sound. Although unlike sound waves, the shape of gravitational waves is a little bit different as I described in that previous video, so the actual quality of the sound might be a little bit different. It's a little bit difficult for us to actually imagine it. But nevertheless, at a distance of one astronomical unit, the level of the sound would be equivalent to a typical fridge. Although in this case, all of this would be extremely short, potentially only a fraction of a second. It would literally sound like what we hear from the video provided by LIGO. But the closer you get to the source of the black hole collision, the louder this bush would get. If you actually get really close, at a distance of maybe about 1 million kilometers away, it would already be really really loud, maybe about 100 decibel. That's the sound of a car honking. But once again, super super quick, less than a second long. And at a distance of about 5000 to 10,000 kilometers away from the collision, we would reach the limit of our hearing. At this point, the eardrum would actually burst. But that's of course not the biggest problem. Because by being so close to the actual collision and to the black holes themselves, you would also start experiencing ridiculous spaghettification effects, among other things. Check out one of the other videos about what happens when you fall into the black hole. But I guess in this case, before you get spaghettified, you also hear this super loud bush for approximately 0.2 seconds. So basically imagine this, but much 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 louder. And all of this, of course, just the physical effect from the space-time shifting around just enough to make itself audible inside your ears. You can actually be in complete vacuum and still hear this, which of course means that, technically, you can hear things in space. And you can obviously also scream if you produce a powerful enough gravitational wave. And so next time someone tells you that nobody can hear you scream in space, just tell them that, well, not if you produce a powerful enough gravitational wave. In that case, everyone can hear you. Although you may need a couple of black holes to make it happen. And so that's pretty much the main idea I wanted to explore in this video. I wanted to explore what happens when black holes collide and what happens when you are very close to them. And you can actually hear all of this happen. In some of the future videos, we're going to be exploring a few more unusual effects produced by black hole collisions, but I don't want to spoil this just yet. Subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying one of the black hole t-shirts in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.